Welcome or welcome back, depending if this is your first visit or not. My name is Greg Leach and I'm painting the Tour de France, close to live, as live. I'm slightly behind the stage today, downside of having to work for a living, getting slightly behind as uh, my work schedule overrides my painting schedule, but I do have today off, so <laughs> there you go. So I am working with um, these wonderful watercolors, cake watercolors from um, the company Richson Art, family owned run company out of Wisconsin. These incredible watercolors, super saturated cake watercolors. When I get to the color you'll see just how bright these colors are which is particularly amazing considering they're cakes. And uh, as we move forward with the paint part of this, I'll explain a little bit about what that means. So I'm painting the Tour de France, my favorite event. Every, every summer, I kind of lose my life as I watch cyclists race around the countryside of France. Sometimes they dip their toes into other countries, but generally speaking, the race takes place. all around the roads, sort of circumnavigating the country each year. So the way that I do this is watching the tour. I see an image that catches my interest or it's visually interesting, which is more the motivation for this particular painting. Then, and sometimes the race images that really sort of tell the story of the race for the day. Well, this kind of tells the story of the race, but in a different way. This is another one of these long, flat, and of course when they say flat, I don't know if you can make out that I'm already putting a hill into the image, but long, flat stages that end the day with a mass sprint for the line. And even out in these wide open fields like this, you'll find a few cycling fans or thousands and thousands of cycling fans on the side of the road waiting to watch the tour ride by. Every, practically every single one of them with their cell phones held out in front of them. Not that I'm not guilty of this too, but you know, we're getting to a point in our world where if you don't have a video of it, it didn't happen. So it kind of makes this discipline of painting bike racing using a paintbrush rather than a cell phone to capture the action of the race, almost archaic. Watercolors have been around for a very long time. I'll leave it to someone else to say just how long. Just about finished doing the line work here. All right. Here we go. Little pun here for you. So today is Bastille Day. The French are always desperate to win the day on Bastille Day. It doesn't happen all that often. even though they outnumber all the other countries in the tour, all the other, you know, nationalities of racers. And they're getting, come back into form where it's been, I think it's since the mid 80s since a French cyclist has won the Tour de France. 
got to be a little frustrating. There's a lot of animosity about Lance Armstrong always winning their race. Turns out, of course, that that animosity was not unfounded. <laughs> well, you know, what are you going to do? So, again, I'm sure I've said this before, but I like to work warm to cool, pale to dark, kind of essential with watercolors because you really can't you can't paint over anything like right now I'm adding some augmentation to the color I first put in but I'm not painting over it I can't change the color um, it just isn't possible because it's a translucent media so you have to either pre-plan you have to know what you're doing or you have to accept the results of what you've done the two are not totally mutually exclusive and so they are riding north of Paris up in the farmlands the climate in my experience of the south of France is equal to the mid-Atlantic in the United States the north of France is more the northeast so along the roads the last two days we've been seeing a lot of wheat fields ready for harvest grain crops all ready to come in in some cases new planting for the second yield before winter sets in a little darker fold the curve of the land there so you can see I had some color in there and I'm just floating this next color into the already wet Um, what color but conversely now if I wanted to go in and work on these trees I can't do that yet because the um, any darks that I put in for the dark foliage will excuse me bleed down through and sort of well clearly will mess up the other part of the painting so again that's something you sort of have to plan how you're moving through the palette as well. So I'm laying in the greens of the foliage, the landscape. So this long flat stage, like yesterday's stage, the rider is really without any big break up the road and without any real crosswinds to worry about. It's like the second non day in a row. Non day meaning they're really, they will tool along at a much more leisurely pace and eventually. So I'm hoping this is dry enough now. It's behaving properly. So they will roll along at a fairly leisurely pace, although their leisurely pace and my flat out are about the same. It's the same in cycling, it never gets easier, you just get faster. I think I'm still in that it just never gets easier. Don't ride as much as I used to. So, when painting perspective, 
there's sort of three types of perspective. One is the drawn perspective, you know, this guy's really big, these guys are smaller, that helps you understand it. There's the diminishing lines, the forced perspective, single vanishing point, and that's further emphasized by the uh, composition here. And then there's color perspective, which is the um, colors in the background, colors in the distance are more muted, less sharp, less distinct, because you're looking through the atmosphere, than the colors in the foreground. They should be brighter, sharper, crisper. You know, if you've got good eyesight, <laughs> that strong color goes deeper. And if you don't, that lack of focus. So, the marketing side of this, this painting is one of five or six originals that I will do today. With the less eventful stage, it'll probably just be five. That I will then post on my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. And uh, you'll be able to purchase them there, or through there you can follow to the follow the link on the post to get to the actual um, painting on my website, gregleach.com, where you will find a secure shopping cart feature. They are one-of-a-kind originals, sold first come, first serve. I usually post them, it's a general rule, around 5 o'clock-ish, 4 o'clock-ish Eastern Standard Time. Life does take over sometimes and they happen later, like last night, yesterday's stage. So just about finished here. Another thing with watercolors, if you want white, because it is a translucent medium, you simply don't put any color down. So these white helmets, like right here, and the white stripe of the sleeve of the jersey on the... Uh, quick step rider I just don't put in any color so and if you're interested in these watercolors you can go to Richson Arts website and that's R-I-C-H-E-S-O-N art A-R-T all one word dot com these are the Yarka watercolors Again, the cake watercolors, you can see I'm picking up, I had put my brush in the water to pick up the paint. And then you can just drag that color out. I want it to be a little lighter, just add a little more water. And I know I've said it before, but if you use your brush to follow the direction, the movement of what you're painting, like this road, see these diagonal lines that swing around the perspective, it helps give that shape, gives that form more shape, makes it a little more dynamic, helps communicate what it is you're painting. A little extra color here for my fans. All right, that's today's painting. Hope you enjoy watching that happen. Hope you'll subscribe to the channel. I do need subscribers. And uh, you'll come back and check it out each day. I'm going to try to zoom in on this painting. Just a little bit. So you can get a better look. Sorry for the bad camera work. 
There you are. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.